So in the previous class, we talked about uh, the marine environment and I mentioned here that the seawater, normal seawater can be a medium for dolomitization. And seawater dolomitization is actually very common. So let's talk about seawater dolomitization and what we know about seawater dolomitization. And here you have an example of a Cretaceous example of um, seawater dolomitization. So the first thing you can notice is that those minerals of dolomite are fairly small. Look at the scale there. So they typically will form small crystals of a few micron, maybe 10, 20 micron across. They can be well expressed, so you can have nice planar um, dolomite, but um, they, they typically will not be very large. And you can dolomitize very extensive areas or even a whole carbonate platform with uh, this process. And in fact, a large amount of the um, Bahamas is dolomitized. And to try to understand how dolomitization happened in the Bahamas, you need to figure out a way by which you can move fluid through this system. So there are multiple models to explain how the Bahamas were dolomitized, but there are really two main models that I want to discuss. One is geothermal convection. So the idea of geothermal convection is that if you have an isolated platform, the flank of that platform are going to go deep into the water column, whereas the top of the platform is in warm water. So what happened is the top of the, of the waters into the platform itself, the pore water, are relatively warm. And then you have the cold water on the, on the edge here of the, of the, the system that will basically have a, a tendency to push in and displace this warmer water. Once the cold water gets into the platform, the idea is that the geothermal gradient, the geothermal heat, will heat that cold marine water and that will make it more buoyant. And when the water is more buoyant, it's going to come up because it's more buoyant and displace the water at the top and then exit on the flank of the atoll. So that creates a circulation, a long-term circulation. We're talking geological time scale here, a million year or so, or even more, of seawater being pumped continuously through the platform. So you bring magnesium to the site of dolomitization, and over millions of years, because you bring that magnesium, you replace some of the calcium by magnesium. So it's a process of small-scale dissolution reprecipitation into dolomite, and you can dolomitize an entire system by this model. There's another model for the Bahamas, which is slightly different, and it's known basically as a mixing zone induced seawater circulation. So here it's a little bit more complicated to understand what's going on, but the idea is that during low stand, platforms, isolated platforms are exposed and you form a freshwater lens because you have rainwater falling on the, on the limestone and the rainwater forms essentially a freshwater lens, which is an aquifer. That freshwater lens will have different depth depending on the topography on top of your island and you can have topographic effects that make the water flow, the, the freshwater flow into the platform and that circulation of fresh water then will basically entrain also the seawater that's within the platform. So the fresh water circulates, that creates a motion of the seawater underneath the mixing zone. So don't get confused. It's not the fresh water that dolomitize, it's the seawater that dolomitize, but the fresh water lens is viewed as essential, this topographic effect, to explain why we have dolomitization and circulation, a pump for seawater. So do, do we have any evidence in the Bahamas for one or the other model? And um, yes, actually Varenkamp and Swart think that they have some evidence for one of the two models. And if you look um, at the dolomitization of the Bahamas here at the top, you can see we have different phases of dolomitization. So we have an early to late Miocene, we have a late Pleistocene dolomite, but what's important is to look at the geometry of that dolomite body and it's actually quite asymmetrical from one side of the Bahamas to the other side of the Bahamas. So, so not at all um, symmetrical. And if you look at the, the geometry that is expected by the freshwater lens 
model, it's very similar to what is found in the cores because you have an asymmetrical distribution of the dolomite. So, so uh, Varenkamp and Swart concluded that at least for the Bahamas, the freshwater lens model is more likely to explain dolomitization than a just geothermal heat uh, model. But both are potential model and may apply in different condition. And I think the jury is still out there for other um, settings. So it's important to understand both of those. What do we know about seawater dolomitization and what do we know about dolomitization after this class? Well, first of all, remember that dolomites represents 50% of the carbonate reservoir. So it is an important process. It's an important diagenetic process and we will encounter that process in a different environment that we will explore. We also mentioned that low temperature dolomitization is still an unresolved issue. It still is a mystery. We have large volume of dolomite that we know was deposited soon after deposition, so relatively early at low temperature, but we don't understand the kinetic of that process still to this day. So we cannot fully explain how dolomitization at low temperature happens. At high temperature, it's easier. But what we do know is that you need a large volume of, mag of magnesium because for every a molecule of carbonate, you need one molecule of uh, magnesium. So that means that you need to have a very efficient pump and be able to circulate a lot of water through the carbonate system. And it's especially true for isolated platform where we have seawater dolomitization. And because seawater has magnesium, it can dolomitize, but because it doesn't have concentrated amounts of magnesium, you need to move a very large volume of seawater. In fact, for every pore volume, you probably need to move 600 pore volume of water to get enough to, uh, magnesium to dolomitize that, that pore uh, volume, assuming that you use all of the magnesium in the water, which is unlikely. So you probably need much more water than this. So in our next class, we'll explore the evaporative regime when you have evaporation on continent or in shallow seas. How does that impact diagenesis?